All right, I'm super stoked to do this today. I've got a surprise. In the mail arrived two things, an actual HasLabs preamp and a KHAS preamp. These were loaned to me by a friend on the TalkBase forums. And those of you that have been following this project know that when I started reverse engineering the HasLabs, this was strictly done from photographs. I had uh, several folks on the TalkBase forums that helpfully provided some close-up pictures of the front and back and also took some measurements for me that made the reverse engineering easier, but I never actually had a HasLabs in hand until today. So today we're going to go through the reverse engineering process of tracing the circuit back against the LHZ schematic that uh, we are currently using and making sure that it is a true one-to-one -one component level clone of the HasLabs. So let's go ahead and get started. So the process of comparing these circuits is very similar to the process of creating a new schematic straight from the preamp. So the methodology is pretty simple. I start with the power circuit, establishing where power comes in and connection to the op amp. So I'll be verifying those, that positive and negative connection to the op amp chip. And then from there, I will take each pin of the chip and then trace what it is connected to on the board. So as I do that, I will outline this using a handy dandy yellow marker to let me know what has been traced. And if there's any changes on the schematic, I'll go ahead and make notes on there of what may be different. And the intention is that each time I trace one of these lines, let's say I'm starting with uh, pin seven on the op amp, I am going to expect that the same number of components are connect physically connected by a trace here. So looking on the schematic, I'll, I'll expect to see it touching up onto a 10 PF capacitor, a 51 K resistor, I'll also expect it to see touching a 12K resistor and a 20K resistor. If there's anything else on here, then I've missed something on the board. So that's it. It's pretty straightforward. So I'm not going to waste the whole video with the tracing. So I'll fast forward through this process now. But I'm going to do this twice, one for the HasLabs, and then I will again go through the process with the KHAS. So how did it turn out? After we finished doing all the circuit tracing, we found that we did indeed have a 100% match to the HasLab. So the LHZ is using exactly the same circuit design and the components all match what was used in the original HasLabs as well. There was one small anomaly. The HasLabs uses a 33 UF power capacitor, whereas the LHZ uses a 100 UF. It doesn't make any difference from a sonic perspective. That's more just for the power supply side. That's the only difference. Otherwise, we do have a true component level clone of the HasLabs. This was also reflected when we did the sweep testing. Uh, we took uh, all the preamps, ran them through our test rig, and ran a 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz sweep on them uh, to make sure that we had the same frequency response. Again, the LHZ exactly matched the HasLabs in frequency response, and when we zoomed in, uh, we could even see some of the artifacts that the HasLab circuit does to the audio. So the KHAS was a different story. While the circuitry was the same as the original HasLabs, there was a clear difference in build quality and component quality choice on the KHAS board. 
uh, clearly using cheaper components and not as much care put into assembly. Um, there were some discrepancies there as well. Um, one of the output resistors, which is supposed to be a 100K resistor, uh, was measuring only at 6.8K, so a lot lower resistance, which reduced the output volume significantly. The K has also had a different response when we ran the sweep test through it. Instead of having the normal treble peak that we see on both the HasLabs and the LHZ, the K has boosted the treble signal beyond a certain point all the way out to 20 kilohertz. I don't think this is by design. And the reason I say that is that the circuitry is the same. I'm assuming that somewhere in the circuit there are other components that are mislabeled or incorrect. So the and likely a capacitor value is not what it is labeled to be. So the KHAS would be a good board uh, if it were to be rebuilt using proper spec capacitors. I think it would uh, perform similarly to the HasLabs. Uh, this was a, uh, I consider a successful test. And I did want to, again, offer my thanks to everybody on the talk based forums who have helped along on this journey uh, and took the time to send me samples that we could uh, do some confirmation with. I really do appreciate it. This project wouldn't have gotten off the ground if it weren't for all the great folks on TalkBase. So that's it for today. Take care and keep rocking.